Up and down the country, schools are implementing their new secondary curriculum. But the big question is, how do we know it's having an impact? We've been doing skills-based afternoons with Year 7 and Year 8 for the last two years. Uh, the tools we've used to measure this have shown that it's going well, but the big question for us now is what's the impact in the wider curriculum for the students and how do we try and measure that impact in the rest of their lessons? Cordano School in North Somerset is a large comprehensive. They are in the early stages of embedding the principles and thinking tools of their new curriculum into every subject and they're trialling a range of different measures to evaluate the impact that this is having on learning. We'll see what this looks like in practice, from their skills-based afternoons to seeing it in action in the classroom. OK, if you could sit on the end there for me. Okay, if you could... It's half past one and the Year 8 are getting ready for their weekly afternoon of skills-based learning known as My PM, My there, Afternoon. There. you please would go there. Okay. About two and a half years ago we realised as a school that our curriculum was pretty good but maybe needed to be changed. From what staff are saying, from what students and what employers were saying, was that uh, students need to leave school with, with skills, with, with qualities and working attributes that perhaps our traditional subject-driven, knowledge-driven curriculum wasn't going to serve them. The My PM sessions are based on a wide range of disciplines, from sports and art to philosophy. Today the pupils are exploring different cultures' perspectives on the soul. Souls with a grudge, you should do something like, like coming after someone, like spooking them out or something. Yeah. Underpinning all these sessions is the school's learning language, a set of core principles and attributes they want all pupils and staff to adopt. All of the name bits when we step yeah. forward. But... There are three aspects to the learning language. The learning, making a contribution and leading your life. In today's philosophy lesson, I deliberately structured the lesson so that all three components of the language for learning would be evident. Is that my name? Buffalo. I think it's Prairie. Because yeah. Prairie, Prairie Dog. So in terms of their learning, I was very much focusing on their questioning, questioning new ideas. Um, I deliberately chose ideas they wouldn't have come across in RE lessons. Um, I was focusing on their creativity, trying to bring that out in dramatic form. <laughs> And then moving on to the second um, component, the values I wanted to show were through the group work. Ideas such as cooperation, they would have to learn to work together. What do you want to do with this bit? Because if the had you said anything... Oh, uh, what? So I'm running away the devil, from the, the lizard to get to the top. Yeah, you're, you're... And then finally, we have the leading your life component. And I thought it was important that students got the chance to reflect on their own learning. So has it meant anything to you? Any, anything you've read? Has it sort of hit an... Uh, it's like it's oh, interesting oh, stories about, you know, it's like different it's views like around the world. What about you learning about different other people? Oh. Aboriginal relatives. Yeah. So do you know a lot about this already then? Yeah, I get like boomerang every Christmas. <laughs> I think the learning language underpins everything that we do. It's the ethos, it's the set of principles. So a student, as they move around the school with different teachers, we're using the same vocabulary, we're using the same language. The white buffalo walked on until she's a bright speck in the distant prairie. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, very much. Thank you gentlemen. What we're going to fill in now um, is the learning language areas that we've talked about today in this philosophy section. Um, what do you think you can still do better? We should probably like, show a bit more respect to what we think people's values are. So, so far we've brought a few things into play on, on how we can measure the successes of MyPM. Self-assessment sheet helps students engage every week with the learning language and it's a way of driving that in. We, we look at our students' effort grades and, and report grades which have been significantly better than previous year groups who haven't gone through my PM. Okay. So we have a, a variety of bits of data which are, are coming together. The big question now is even if that is all good then then what impact is that having on your average art lesson or your average music lesson or your science lesson? To measure the impact of my PM on the wider curriculum Ross has started a series of lesson observations. This morning he'll observe a year eight geography lesson. Right, well, good morning, Year 8. We're going to be looking at a topic today linked to these photographs that I've got on the board. Can we see that they've all got some poverty in these pictures? Megan, what does poverty mean? It means if someone's really poor. 
If we're saying that the learning language is critical for our work in school, we want to be looking for that in lessons. So we've currently adapted our, our lesson observation form that, that's not just a traditional kind of record of what happens in a lesson, but now much more looking for where's the evidence of the learning language and can we capture that alongside the other things that we try and traditionally capture. I'm going to ask you to open the envelope that you've got in front of you and carefully take out those cards for me. Some of the reasons why we've got some places around the world which are really really poor and other places which are really really wealthy just jot down the number underneath that category that you think that reason belongs to yeah, there's plenty of tea to export but the price of tea has fallen sharply environmental no um, economic yeah. Yeah. Um, a few schools I don't know, that's like socials. I would say social. Yeah. It's interesting when you start looking for the learning language, actually how much of it is there in terms of links to our wider world, links to thinking skills, links to uh, tolerance and respect. But actually, I was able to, to tick off over half of the areas of the learning language that came up implicitly within the lesson just because it was a lesson that was focused on student progress and students particularly having to synthesise information. So again, we need our 15 cards. And if this time you can turn your worksheets over, you should see that you've got a grid, a little bit like I've got on the board here. All right, a little diamond nine grid that we've got on the board here. Which of your top nine do you think is the greatest significance? Part of the aim of the learning language is to develop independent thinking. And to help pupils structure their thinking, the school has adopted a range of thinking tools and thinking maps. These tools have previously been modeled in earlier MyPM sessions, and can be used by teachers in everyday learning. I put at the top a small number of people in most of its wealth. I did think that was important, but I didn't think it was important in some of the other things, because in a way I put most of the like diseases in the middle, because what's the point in getting good education if you die at like 12 because of it? If some people kind of shared out the money, then they could get hospitals and things. True. I, th I think these tools are, are one really good way that we can help pupils become more independent. We teach them in, in MyPM specifically because it, it kind of is trying to emphasise the cross-curricular approach of what these things are. If we, if we had it very embedded in subjects, pupils may have the tendency to just think, well, I just use that one in maths, I just use that one in science, aren't they? No. Did, did you have any that, that you both decided to, um, to miss out? It's quite hard to decide because all of them are important, but yeah. you've got to think of the really important You've got to think of the really important ones. Have you got any as head of humanities, I'm very, very keen that what we're doing in my PM becomes part of humanities lessons. The sorts of things I'll be doing is I'll be taking books in and we, we can see then evidence of are these thinking tools actually being used in classrooms. We've done that stage and we found that generally they are. We need to now take our self-evaluation to a, the next step. It needs to be a little more rigorous to say, well, what's the quality of the thinking maps and not just the fact that it's being used. We're going to have a bit of a think about how well we feel we've done in during today's lesson. Linked to our learning objectives and also the learning language which you should have in front of you in your journals. I'm going to ask you in a moment to read through the five questions and then place the number of the question somewhere along your line between completely disagreeing with it and completely agreeing with it. In terms of embedding learning language, um, the stage we're at now is I'm asking all our um, department leaders to make sure that when schemes of learning are being written, we are actually having a section which says learning language within those schemes of learning and what I'm asking teachers to do is at this stage to be very very explicit about the fact that we are looking at this uh, area of learning language in this lesson. And which one do you think you did you did really really well in today? Which are you really Same as uh, the four one. Yeah. I, I, mean, I worked well because that one we actually got the whole thing done together mm. and got it done quicker and the diamond one we actually listened to each other and ch changed some ideas. Taking our kind of core objectives from that lesson and then breaking them down into how they matched into the learning language and getting pupils to self-assess that and then from that getting pupils to set their own targets based around that learning language does engage them more in, in that process. Okay, what do you think you might need to work on? To Probably maybe working a bit faster and reading through the question a bit, mm -hmm. like actually reading the question properly. One of the challenges is, is I can imagine many students will engage with that process but for other students they, they will view it as a teacher jumping through a, a hoop and, and it's done and it doesn't mean much. So we're conscious of, of, because it's our key framework for learning within the school, 
our next challenge is, well, how do we make it higher profile? <laughs> What we've tried to set up is we, we hope that MyPM would have this impact in other lessons, but what I, I wonder about is do you just think about MyPM stuff within Wednesday afternoons or is it, you tell me, is it affecting what you're doing in other lessons? MyPM focuses on group work a lot yeah. and before I used to find it quite difficult to work in groups because I like to be in control of everything. One of the things that's always really powerful is when we sit down with our students and, and find out, you know, what they're receiving and how they're interpreting what we're trying to what we're trying to achieve with my PM. Sometimes they say um, uh, in this lesson we're going to be doing this, which is going to be using this part of the learning language. Many students say, actually, yes, I can see the point. Many of them will still think of the learning language just as a kind of token framework. So again, it throws it back to us of how can we bring that alive and how can how can teachers make that make that live with students? Would this be a good kind of assessment? framework to use in, in other subjects as well. The only problem with that is you lose about five, ten minutes of your lesson doing it. Right. And I'd, and I'd rather learn the stuff that we're supposed yeah. to be learning in the lesson than filling in a sheet like I that. think that's a really interesting point, Becky. So, so could we do it in a way that didn't impact too much on your learning in, in the lessons? We could probably tr turn it into like a bit more of a checklist and like in each stage of the lesson, fill in a different part of it. OK. You're doing it yourself, you're actually understanding your own learning while well, if you do it with a class with everyone contributing you're just going to get the majority of the class's views not your own personal views yeah you could like have a special folder to put it all in and then you can look at it all at the end of the year and that could go in with your progress check okay yeah because your family when you take it home could see what you're learning in school and how you're learning it Right. The evaluation work we've done so far shows us that things are successful, but it's, it's very much a, a surface view. There's definitely a next step for us in developing um, a framework of, of uh, assessing skills across the whole of the work that we do at Gordano. We also know that our lesson observation process is, is in its infancy. We know that it's a profile that we need to raise with staff. One thing we're trialling at the moment is a, is a lesson observation, an, an amendment of our lesson observation form, which, which is explicitly looking for where the learning language and where thinking tools are appearing in lessons. I'd say learning language, yes, um, but thinking tools, probably not. Uh, and the reason I say that, I think there are some teachers who would feel that they would be under pressure to use a thinking tool in an observed lesson when it may not be appropriate. And I, know, I think another good point is that there's so yeah. much thinking that goes on in lessons. A lot of the time it's not written down. So how are we actually going to assess that thinking within a lesson that doesn't always come from something as concrete as a, as a written piece of evidence in their books or something like that. But I do think Adam was, what was interesting was saying about the learning language and I think by having it as part of an observation and, and by teachers being expected to be able to use the learning language in lessons, we're going to get greater teacher engagement with the learning language that I don't think we have at the moment. And because the learning language, a large proportion of it refers to thinking, then maybe actually we're part way there because yeah. if, we're, if we're looking for the learning language we're going to be looking for thinking anyway. You will never get in, in, in any change model everyone going at the same time and, and I think as, as teachers can see the success coming through the early adopters of actually saying yeah it's not tipped up you learning we've not driven a horse and cart through your schemes of learning this is actually working but it's got to be it's got to be taken from each team and each team have got to have an ownership on this and I think um, and, and taking it forward that's when it will be developed and embedded. You can find some of the resources featured in this school by going to the resources area associated with the programme on the Teachers TV website.